All right, boys and girls, we are going to do math message 4-5, and in this lesson, we are going to work to identify and sort quadrilaterals based on their attributes. Now, let's talk about some of these words before we continue on. First of all, quadrilaterals, you should know, we've already talked about this, um, quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons, and then we're going to be able to identify and sort different kinds of quadrilaterals based on their attributes. And attributes are like their characteristics, and we're going to talk more about that as we move on. So let's just kind of go back and review. We've already learned what polygons are. Okay, we learned that polygons is any shape with straight sides that's closed and the sides don't cross. So there's lots of different polygons. Now we learned that these um, polygons are named um, based on their prefix. So like a triangle is a three-sided polygon. A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. A pentagon is a five-sided polygon. A hexagon is a six-sided polygon. And an octagon is an eight-sided polygon. Now there are actually several more kinds of polygons than that, but those are the main ones that we focus on in third grade. Now today, we are going to specifically look at quadrilaterals, so those four-sided shapes. Now, boys and girls, there are actually different kinds of quadrilaterals, and they all have special names based on their attributes. So before we get going here, let's... Um, sort out some of these shapes based on if they are a quadrilateral or not. So what you could do is have a sheet of paper out beside you, and if you don't have it, you can go ahead and um, grab a sheet of paper, pause the video. I want you to make a list of as many quadrilaterals as you can, okay? And you can just write down the letter on the shape. So you are looking for quadrilaterals. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so if you found all of the quadrilaterals, you should have come up with eight different shapes that are quadrilaterals. And so I drug all of those over to my green circle. All of these shapes are quadrilaterals. What makes them quadrilaterals? Well, they are four-sided polygons, right? They all look different, though, don't they? Even though they all have four sides, they all look a little different. So we're going to be talking about the special names for each one of these polygons. Now, before we do that, we need to learn some vocabulary words. Let me see if I can get this out of our way here. And hopefully you can see this okay on your screen. But um, as we talk about polygons and shapes and quadrilaterals and all of that, we're going to be using these words quite often. And I need you to know what they mean um, and, and fully understand them when you hear me say them. So the first one, that's pretty easy, side. We all know what a side is, right? This shape has four sides, okay? That one's not too hard. You might also hear me say the word vertex, or sometimes you'll hear me say the plural form, vertices. Vertex is the corner. So right here is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. If I say that this has four vertices, because vertices is just a plural form. So a vertex is the corner. It's where two sides meet. Right there is the vertex or the corner. Now, we also have the word angle. And the angle is this space kind of like inside. So where these two lines meet and you've got the vertex, the angle is kind of this space inside. So this is an angle. This is an angle. This is an angle. And this is an angle. And we'll talk more about angles. Um, actually, this next word is right angle. Now, I need you to understand what a right angle is. This is really, really important. A right angle sometimes has different names. Sometimes you'll hear it be called a 90-degree angle, this little sign here. That's 90-degree angle. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll hear it called a square angle. Okay. And what a right angle is, is it is an angle that really makes 
a square corner. Okay, so look at this shape here. This one here, I'm going to erase all these marks here. This shape here has no right angles. Okay, none of these angles make a square corner. But let's look at the shape over on the right. These angles make square corners. Okay, so a right angle is an angle that makes a square corner. And you really got to remember that. These, that's very important. Square corner. Whoops. If I could learn to spell, that would be super great. Another word that you need to understand and you need to know what it means is the word parallel. Okay, parallel are two lines that are the same distance apart and they will never ever connect. Okay, think of the lines on a road. Think of railroad tracks. Parallel lines are two lines that will never, never touch. So let's look at these two shapes that I have up here again. All right, so let's look at these two sides. These two sides are called parallel sides. Okay, they kind of look like railroad tracks, don't they? And they're the same distance apart on both ends. That means even if I continue these lines out in both directions, they'll never, ever, ever touch because they're parallel lines. Now let's look at these sides. This side and this side. Okay, I might actually do that in black so that you can see it better maybe. Okay. These sides are not parallel. Do you see how at the top they're closer together than at the bottom? Okay, that means if I were to continue these lines up, 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 eventually they're going to touch, right? So those lines are not parallel, okay? I've got a lot of chicken scratch on here. And finally, the last word is equal length. We're going to be talking about the sides of these um, quadrilaterals or these polygons and sometimes we might talk about equal length sides. Well equal just means they're the same length, right? They're the same size. That's pretty self-explanatory. So the words that I think are going to maybe be um, words that you're going to really have to think about. The word vertex, remember that's corners. The word angle, that's the space inside there. Right angle, that's when it makes a square corner. And parallel is when the two sides are the same distance apart like railroad tracks. That is parallel, okay? So those are the kind of things I need you to remember as we're talking about these shapes. All right, so now, the first shape we're going to talk about, I said that we are going, I need to find a good place for this. There really is no good place. Maybe just kind of stick it up there in the corner. All right, so we're going to be talking about different kinds of quadrilaterals today. And I said there are all kinds of quadrilaterals and they have special names. Now here are the eight quadrilaterals that we had pulled up into the green circle earlier. These um, shapes down here at the bottom of our screen are all quadrilaterals because they all have four sides. But now we're going to talk about how some of them have a special name and that special name is a trapezoid. So we got to learn what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid. And here's the definition. A trapezoid has at least one pair of parallel sides. At least one pair. It can have two pair. But a trapezoid has to have at least one pair of parallel sides. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to pause the video. I need you to look at these eight quadrilaterals at the bottom of your screen and find the ones that you think are trapezoids. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so let's go over and see if you found all of the trapezoids. So I'm going to pull up shape D and we're going to see if that's a trapezoid. It has to have at least one pair of parallel sides. So I'm going to look at this, these sides. Well, I know these are not parallel because see how this is a short amount of space. This is a long amount of, bigger amount of space. If I continue that on, they will cross. So those sides aren't parallel, but only has to have one pair. So let me try these sides. And again, those sides are not parallel. So D does not work. All right, let's try G. 
It only has to have one pair of parallel sides. And look here, those sides look like railroad tracks. See how they're the same distance apart? That means they'll never, ever cross. So G is a trapezoid. All right, let's look at H. Let's see if it has at least one pair of parallel sides. And it does. I didn't trace that side very well, but <laughs> there we go. Looks like railroad tracks. If I continue them on, they'll never cross. So H is a trapezoid. All right, let's look at I. And I is also a trapezoid. It has at least one pair of parallel sides. Let's look at J. J has at least one pair of parallel sides. And let's look at K. K has one pair of parallel sides. Let's look at L. Well, let's see here. These sides here, are they parallel? Oh, I can tell. Look how far away they are down here and how they're closer up here. So that is definitely not parallel. Pull that L back down. And looking at O, I can tell right away there are no parallel sides in O. So boys and girls, all of these shapes right here are trapezoids. And you need to understand that they are trapezoids because they have at least one pair of parallel sides. All right, let's look at a kite and see what makes a kite a kite. A kite has two pairs of equal length sides. That means it has two sides that are equal and another two sides that are equal. So it has two pairs of equal length sides. Now here's the important part. The sides with the same length touch. So two pairs of equal length sides that touch. Okay, now this one here can be kind of tricky. Instead of having you pause the video and try to come up with some, I'm gonna kind of show you what I mean. So I'm gonna bring up the shape K because I can clearly tell that it has two pairs of equal length sides. These sides are equal and these sides are equal. Equal length means the same size, same length, okay? Do those two pairs, do the equal length sides touch? You see these blue sides are equal, but they don't touch. The red sides are equal, but they don't touch. So K is not a kite. It does have two pairs of equal length sides, but they don't touch, okay? I'm gonna bring up G. All right, these sides I can clearly tell are equal. So that's one pair of equal length sides. But are these sides equal? They are not, okay? That does not work. All right, let's bring up now the shape L. All right, I'm looking for equal length sides. It looks like this side equals this side. And it looks like this side equals this side. And they touch. The difference between this shape and this shape is in K, the sides didn't touch that were the same size. In L, they do. So shape L is a kite. All right, now I want you to pause the video. There are actually, let's see here, there's actually three more shapes that are kites. Can you find the three other shapes? We, we already know that K is not one, G is not one. We know that L is. Can you find three more shapes that are kites? Go ahead and pause the video. All right, the other shapes you should have found is I, because these two sides are the same length and they touch. These two sides are the same length and they touch, okay? Another shape you should have found is O. These two sides are the same length and they touch. These two sides are the same length and they touch. And the last one you should have found is shape J, okay? J has, let's see, these two sides are equal length and they touch. These two sides are equal length and they touch. Actually, J has four equal sides, doesn't it? What would you normally call shape J? 
a square, right? When you see shape J, you automatically say square. But let's look back. Look here. J can also be called a trapezoid because it has at least one pair of parallel sides. Now we just learned that J can also be called a kite because it has two pairs of equal length sides that touch. All right, the next shape I want to teach you about is a parallelogram. Now look at that word, parallelogram. Do you see the word parallel in there? Remember, I need you to remember what parallel means. I always like to think of, look at those two letter L's in the word parallel. That, those are parallel lines, aren't they? So a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the shapes that are parallelograms. All right, hopefully you found shape H is a parallelogram. These two sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel, okay? Shape G only has one pair of parallel sides, so that doesn't work. Shape I, these two sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel. Oh, look at that shape J again. That's square. Those are parallel. Those are parallel. Shape K, these are parallel. And these are parallel. So all of these shapes are parallelograms. You should have found four different shapes. All right, let's look at the next slide. Now a rectangle. Now we've been learning about rectangles since we were in preschool, right? Your teachers were having you pick out a rectangle. Which of these shapes would you say is a rectangle? And I know that everyone is going to pick shape K because that's a rectangle, right? That's what we've learned as a rectangle from the time we were little. But let's see what makes a rectangle a rectangle. A rectangle is a parallelogram, so it has two pairs of parallel sides, with four right angles. Now let's think about what those right angles are. Do you remember what right angles are? Square corners. So this has four square corners. Pause the video. There is one more shape that has four square corners. See if you can find it. And hopefully you came up with shape J, has four square corners, okay? Now, again, if I would have pulled up shape J, you would have said that's a square, right? And you're right, it is a square. But it's also a rectangle, because what makes it a rectangle? It has four right angles. All right, let's look at the next shape, rhombus, okay? What makes a rhombus a rhombus is it is also a parallelogram, so it has two pairs of parallel sides, but those sides are four equal sides, okay? So find a shape that has four equal sides. I am going to give you a hint. There are two rhombuses here in this, this, um, these shapes. Pause the video, find the two rhombuses. All right, and hopefully you found shape I, all four sides are the same length, and dun, da, 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 shape J, four equal sides. And again, you would have said, well, Mrs. McMullen, that is a square. And you are right, that is a square. But it is also a rhombus, because the definition of a rhombus is four equal sides. Now, the last, final, shape is the square. A square is a parallelogram, so it has two pairs of parallel sides. It has four equal length sides and four right angles. How many squares do you think you can find? Pause the video. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, this is your only square. I can make, oh no, that turned it into not a square. Let's delete that. That is no longer a square. I was just trying to make it bigger. There we go. Shape J is the only square. Okay, none of these other shapes are squares. 
Because to be a square, you have to be a parallelogram. You have to have four equal length sides and four right angles. If you have all of those characteristics or attributes, you are a square. Did you notice that the square followed, the square was also called a rhombus because that had four equal length sides. It was called a rectangle because it had four right angles. It was called a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides. It was called a kite because it has two pairs of sides that are equal length that touch. And it is a trapezoid because it has at least one pair of parallel sides. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you have all of these different, these are all what? They are all quadrilaterals. All of these shapes we worked with today are quadrilaterals because they all have four sides. But we learned that those eight different quadrilaterals also have special names based on their attributes. So I'm going to give you a Google slide that's going to practice this a little bit more.